Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Get on the Bus, Res Rev Up Your Reference Skills Program. I'm Jamie Marcus, the Library Development Manager at the Wyoming State Library, and I'm the coordinator of this program. And I'm very excited to, uh, to listen to John Bernheisel this morning and learn all about Google. A um, couple of quick announcements, and I'll turn the, the program over to John. If we have any technical issues like we did last week, don't worry, we will make an archived version of this program. Or if you have to step away, don't worry about that either. You can always watch the recorded version, hopefully later today or later this week. If uh, you'd be so kind as to put us on mute, that would be fantastic. If you do happen to have hold music at your library, could you please not put us on hold? We'd appreciate that. If you do the homework for this program, by next Tuesday, I'd love to give you a $25 gift certificate to Amazon.com or a Boogie Board LCD writing tablet. And in fact, I've had uh, quite a few people who are really excited about their Boogie Board tablets call back and ask where they can buy more of them. So that's actually quite a fun prize to, to get. And speaking of prizes, I wanted to award a couple prizes for last week's widgets program. Kurt from Teton County got a $25 Amazon.com gift certificate, and Trudy Martinez from the Glenrock Branch Library will be receiving a boogie board. If you do all of the homework for all of the Get on the Bus sessions, by April 15th, you could win registration at the 2010 Wyoming Library Association Conference, an uh, iPod Touch, and we're getting close enough to the end that I might just throw in an Amazon Kindle or a netbook or something big and fun like that. If you're a teacher and you're interested in getting PTSB credit, just go ahead and follow the instructions on the introduction page on the Get on the Bus website, which is getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com. If you're a library support staff person and you're interested in the library support staff certification program offered by the American Library Association, the Get on the Bus program may help you, well, may qualify to fill the reference portion of that program. More information on the Library Support Staff Certification Program will be presented in a webinar on April 14th. And of course, you can look for my emails to see when and where and how to log in. So that being said, I'm just going to turn the, the program over to John. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Um, tell me if I'm doing something wrong. This is all new to me, too. And um, for some reason, I've, I've done lots of uh, presentations be, before uh, huge groups of people and uh, literally thousands of people before, but I think I'm more nervous right now with um, because of the different format. So if you'll bear with me, I'll try and get over my jitters a little bit. Let me tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, up on the screen right now, I have uh, my email address, um, the letter J, and then bernheisel at gmail.com. <clears throat> also, I've made a little website um, for this uh, presentation. And I'll be showing you that in just a few minutes, and that's www.jmb5.com slash google.htm. And um, if any of you are Facebook people, um, my Facebook username is yorunner. If you want to uh, find me on Facebook, uh, I'm a big Facebook fan. And um, if you search for me with yorunner or with my name, John Bernheisel, um, you can find me there. Um, just quickly show you a picture of, there's my uh, good-looking children. Um, my two oldest daughters are in college at Utah State. Uh, this is my son. He's a sophomore uh, here at, in high school, Rocky Mountain High School. Here's my daughter, Melissa. She is a, a seventh grader. And here's the whole family. I'm the one in the back that looks like he's in pain. And um, uh, it was a, a cold day, and I don't like to have my pictures taken for, so very much. but. Uh, so anyway, so there's a picture of my family and I. Um, so let's get right on it. Um, for most of us, for most people, Google is just a search site. And um, we go to Google and we, um, we type in a few words that we're looking for, and um, it gives us some, uh, a, a million different choices. And, um, and we sort of randomly pick one that looks good, and sometimes we get lucky, and sometimes we don't. And um, but I want to uh, to share with you a, a lot of things about Google. Um, before I go too much further, I just want you to know that I, I don't think uh, I think it said on the schedule we're going to go to one o'clock. Uh, 
Um, I don't think it'll break anybody's heart if we, we're not going to go that far. Um, I'm hoping to be out uh, a little after afternoon. And then um, if you have other questions or there's something more we can do, I'd be happy to communicate with you online or email or Facebook. And, and so we'll, we'll try and keep this to about an hour. I, I hope um, that two-hour time period didn't scare too many people away. <clears throat> but, um, but back to Google. Um, uh, so, uh, as I was saying, for most people, Google is just a place where we search, but Google has become so much more than that, and I want to just very quickly, um, and I may frustrate a, little, a few of you if you are following me along by uh, going to Google yourself, because I'm, I'm going to show you things that are cool and exciting, and then I'm going to move on. And so what I'm hoping is you'll just keep up with me, and then... Um, and then you'll have to uh, come back at a, and when you have more time and, and observe some of these things. Um, so let's just uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn off a few things right here so that we can um, uh, we don't slow our computer down. And um, I'm going to take you to this website that I just showed you again, jmb5.com/google.htm, and I'm going to show you something called Google Trends. And um, what Google Trends is, it's a way to look at how people search um, in the United States and other places. And uh, so let's just quickly do an example. Let's search for the name Obama. Obviously, President Obama is something that is often searched for in Google. And so we hit Search Trends, and what happens is a graph comes up. And you can see that um, in 2005, um, he wasn't searched for very often, obviously. Um, uh, if you notice in 2004, there was a couple of searches or, you know, uh, uh, obviously several thousand searches for him. Um, if you recall, he spoke at one of the, the Democratic uh, um, National Convention in 2004, but for several years it was quiet. And then obviously as he ran for president and became president and was elected, the number of searches went up. And, and so this is a very visual graph on searches. Now, something we can do that's sort of fascinating is we can compare two searches. For example, we can compare, by adding a comma, we can add a comma and go Spears. So we can compare how many times Obama is searched for versus how many times named Spears, assuming Britney Spears is searched for. So if I click on Search Trends, and let's see, already my computer is slow and that concerns me. Here it comes. Okay, so you can see that in red is Britney Spears searches, and in blue is President Obama's searches. And so, uh, again, it's a very visual comparison. There's, there's, again, I'm going to go through um, these websites very quickly, um, but just to give you a few things, you can take a look at by country. So if you just wanted to see um, the what country was searching for President Obama most or least. You could do it that way. You can search by cities in the United States. You can even see what languages the Google is in when they are searched for. And, um, and so there's, there's just literally hundreds of things you can do here. You can see that at, as it goes along, there is uh, some little uh, bullets here for A, and you can see some of the events in President Obama's life or presidency that may have triggered a, a, a sudden increase in his, um, in his searches. This is called Google Trends. Um, to show you a couple other features real quick, I'm going to search for something I'm interested in, the Boston Marathon. So we'll search for that. And um, you can see, uh, again, visually, um, when in the year the Boston Marathon is most searched for. Um, and you can see this spike in about um, April when the Boston Marathon is held every year. Um, we could also search by, uh, again, here's the different countries we could search for. We could narrow a search down to one specific year. And so here we go to 2009, and we can see that in April of 2009 was the most searches for the Boston Marathon. Okay. This is called Google Trends. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my web uh, that I showed you. I should have bookmarked that. I'll bookmark that right now. Um, okay, so here we are. So that was Google Trends. 
Now we're going to go to something called Google Translate. Now, some of these sites you may have seen before at some point, and um, if you have, I apologize. Um, I'm certain that you probably haven't seen all of them. But um, here is a, a translation website. Let me show you a few things. Um, so I can write down, I love pizza. Okay? And I want to translate that from English, um, because I typed in English. There's English. I want to type it, uh, translate it into, let's say, Danish. So I hit, uh, and it translates. So you can see, um, I'm not even going to attempt to, uh, to translate that, uh, to pronounce uh, that. Um, you can obviously pick lots of lots of different languages that are available, and um, it does that. Ich liebe pizza. And, um, but um, even more exciting than, than just this sort of translation tool, and just so you know, um, you can copy and paste huge documents in here. I haven't reached its max. I, I, I don't know exactly, um, but I know that I've copied and pasted at least a thousand word document in, and it translated the whole thing. Um, now, the, the perhaps neater is you can type in a web address, and it'll translate the web address. So I'm going to hit a return. And what happens is it's going to pull up CNN's website. Okay? And so I want to translate. It takes just a second here. So I want to translate, as you can see, um, CNN's website at the top here. You can see I typed in CNN.com. I'm translating it from English, which is its normal language, into German. And so every... A word in that website that it recognizes, it is going to search to uh, to translate into German or Spanish or whatever you uh, like. Now, my Spanish teacher at, at this school uses this um, quite a bit and um, uh, allows kids to uh, to browse. Um, you know, the boys like to read ESPN or some other sports site, and the girls, uh, I'm not sure what they looked at. Um, but uh, she says, well, you can look at the sports page, but you have to look at it in Spanish. And, um, and, and they like that. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's amazingly how well done it is. You can see there's a few things. Um, some of the, um, these uh, topics, um, I guess these are in... Um, uh, German also. Sometimes there's some images and so forth that don't appear in the in the in the in the translated language. But um, again, this is a a great tool for translating not just um, uh, not just text, but entire websites and um, and so forth. Okay, we're just going to keep on moving down the list here. Now I, I I need to explain one thing to you. There are almost Every site that we're going to look at is does not require a, a, a username and a password. Um, but I would, as we get further down in, in our discussion today, we're going to get into some things that require you to have a Google account or a Gmail account. It's the same thing. And, um, and so um, I'm not suggesting you get one right now, but um, uh, if you don't have a Gmail account, I recommend very highly that you do. Um, our school district is going to begin using Google for um, our calendaring next year, and perhaps all of our emails are going to be done through Google and um, several things. And, and so, um, but let's move on here. We're going to go to something called Google Transliteration. And um, I learned when I was traveling in Russia as a kid that there are um, the Russians have a, an entirely different alphabet. Um, each letter um, represents a sound. And so what this website does is it, uh, you type something in and it converts it in so that someone from that language could read it in the sounds that you have. In other words, it transliterates it. So I'll just type in something really quick. Um, my name is John Bernheisel, and it, it um, now this is in Hindi, and obviously I don't read or speak Hindi, but uh, according to Google, this, uh, someone who spoke this language could read that and pronounce it to say, my name is John Bernheisel, just to show you a few others. Um, uh, there's Sanskrit and Russian and Punjabi uh, 
and, and I'm going to mispronounce some of these. So, um, so if I click on Russian and then I type in uh, my name is John Bernheisel, it shows it in Russian. So here is my name um, pronounced in, uh, if it was in Hindi, the second line is in Russian. Let's do one more real quick in Arabic. And, uh, oops, my face went off. Let's see. My name is John Bernheisel. And that is Arabic. And, again, I have to just take Google's word for it in this case. And, um, but um, I would uh, encourage you to try that out if you have some of your Arabic-speaking friends to give them a try. And, again, this is Google Transliteration. Google Transliteration. Now, almost all of these, if you have a, a Google phone, um, which I um, wish I had, um, but I can't afford one right now. They're uh, two or $300 each. But all of these apps are available for download for a Google phone. And um, so it's something you may want to uh, consider. Just moving on here, we're going to go to Google Movies. Okay, and so... Um, now you can see up at the top is my uh, Gmail account, and I gave you that at the beginning of our discussion. Um, it, so what it does is if you click on movies, it knows that I live in northern Wyoming. And so the default for Google Movies is for it to show the local theaters in my area. Okay. Um, so, but what we can do is we can type in, let's go 826. 601, change location, and uh, so here's Casper, Wyoming, and it shows um, all the movies um, in the theaters in Casper, Wyoming, um, and so uh, this is just a, uh, a fun little thing that Google does, but it, it's a little more fun if you think of it, if you, if you go to just regular Google. Okay, so here we are just in regular Google, the one you're familiar with. And if I go movies, and then my zip code, 82420, or let's do a different one. Let's do 82716, which is Gillette, and we click return. It will automatically go to that same um, thing, and here's the movies. We can go right to here, and it will show the different movies that are going to play in Gillette, Wyoming. It's got the times, the names of the theaters, and so forth. So wherever you are, you can just type in the word movies and the zip code, and it'll take you right to there. Um, while I have, um, while I just have this, um, we're just in the regular um, internet here, and just in, in Google that you're most familiar with. Let's get back to a, here's the Google screen that you're probably most familiar with. I'm just going to take just a few minutes and show you some sort of Google tricks that you may or may not have seen in the past. Um, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Um, I am, uh, if you um, email me, uh, I will email you back um, some, uh, a, a document that has all these tricks um, typed out on them. Um, and so if I, uh, again, I'll look for your email. John, this is Jamie. Why don't you email that to me and we'll put it up on the website.
and again, it gives us, um, so there's all these sort of things. Um, what is, oops, what is 34% of 90? And it says it's 30.6. Um, it, it can also be used for currency conversion. For example, I can go, how many yen in a dollar? And it tells me there are 90.26, one dollar is equal to 90.26 Japanese yen. Okay? I can even do something like 100 euros, let's see, maybe, maybe better spell it right, and five rubles in dollars. Okay? So what I'm asking is to tell me 100 euros plus five rubles, which is the Russian currency, in dollars, and it tells me that together those equal $135.49. Um, uh, it, 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 it does almost anything in Google in terms of conversions. For example, you can do how many centimeters in a mile for physics students. So you can see that 160,934.4 centimeters is equal to one mile. How, for you cooks, how many teaspoons, teaspoons, whoa, in a gallon? 768 U.S. teaspoons. Um, it can convert between uh, centimeters to, to metric. You can do how, how many PSI is an ATM? Oh, didn't pick that one up. I, I got one that it didn't. Pounds per square inch, that's physics. So I, uh, I found one thing that it can do. So anyway, so lots and lots of conversions, lots of math problems you can do on here. Um, uh, a couple other things while I'm in just this page right here. Um, we can just go and type in a, um, an area code. So your caller ID pops up and you don't recognize an area code, so we're going to just click on 702 and it'll tell you that that is in Nevada. Obviously, we'll do 307, 307, and you can see that 307 is in Wyoming. Um, so you get a phone call from 862, and you go, I don't know anybody in 862, and you see that's in northern New Jersey, and you realize that some telemarketer is calling you, and so you decide not to answer. Um, uh, let's go back to... Um, our website that we are working with, jmb5.com slash google.htm, and we'll continue going through some of those. We did movies. Now let's go to Google Images, and it sounds like I didn't listen to last week's um, uh, presentation, but it sounds like maybe you went through some of these things last week, but I'll just do a quick summary here. Um, Google Images collects images from all over the Internet, and um, just to show you, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of tricks real quick here. Um, we can do a search for my favorite is I like um, I teach chemistry and biology, and so I like to find cool pictures to add to homework assignments and so forth that I do. So I can go clip art and then chemistry and do a search for that in Google Images, and you can see there's lots of different images that come up. And so maybe I like this one pretty well. I'll click on it. I'll say, see full-size image. Then I'm going to right-click, save that picture to my picture file. I'll give it a name that I recognize better, so we'll call that a Bunsen burner. And um, we'll save that, and then I've got that saved, and I can use it on um, some homework assignment or whatever I'm doing. So if you add the word clip art in front of it, you get pictures that are more cartoony, like like this, for example. Um, uh, you can, again, in um, uh, Google Images, you can search for, um, I want to search by a certain size. Um, if you're working, if you're trying to work with ph photographs or you're going to use a, for example, if you're making a PowerPoint that's going to be projected to a large audience, and if you don't start with an image that is of a good quality, then when it's enlarged by the LCD projector, the quality is going to be very poor. And so you may want to just search for large images to begin with. Now, there's not clip art that isn't typically large, but if I wanted to do um, uh, primates, and so I do a search, now I've got some primate pictures to choose from. I know they're already 
large enough, you can see this one's 1,048 by 1,620 uh, pixels. So it's a good sized picture. So if I add that to my PowerPoint, it's going to project well and so forth. So, um, and again, there's lots of different choices here that you can work with on um, the Google Images um, thing. And I won't spend too much time on that. Um, again, back to my uh, website that I've made, and we'll continue going through this a little bit. Um, the next one is Google Books, and this is a new project that Google's um, attempting to do. They have scanned um, literally thousands of books. Um, not all of them are incredibly interesting. Um, I couldn't find the uh, most recent um, uh, Twilight novel on here, and I couldn't find any John Grisham books on here. However, for classic books, um, it's um, pretty kind of neat. So I'm going to do a search for Tale of Two Cities, and I will hit Return, and we'll see what comes up real quick. Okay. So um, here's the Tale of Two Cities. Um, apparently, there's actually you know several different versions of it that have been scanned. I'm going to pick this one. From 1880, I'll click on it, Tale of Two Cities, and um, this is all in Google Books. Um, apparently, these aren't copyrighted anymore. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works. And so here's the artwork that was at the cover of the book. It says, digitized by Google. Um, some poor person had to use a scanner and scan every page. That would have taken a while. So I'm going to go to page one. So I type in a 1 and I hit return. And so it loads up page 1. And as you can see, you all know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, and so forth. Okay. So now, would I really read a book on, on Google Books? I don't know, perhaps. But um, I, I guess I could. But also, to make it a little bit more readable, it's not as handy as your Kindle, probably. Um, you can click on this full screen, and then you can just scroll down through the pages of the book. And um, you just remember that you last read on page four, and then next time you come back, you can just go to that page, and um, it'll take you directly where you want to be. So um, anyway, that's Google Books. There are several old magazines. Let's see if I can back out of here. Um, there are several old magazines. There are several life magazines and so forth. Um, if you're looking for old um, uh, articles um, where you want to see the ads and so forth, these may be kind of handy. Um, you could spend some time going through this. Um, I honestly don't know how they decide what books are going to be on here or not. Um, um, you can see there's some old, that uh, looks like a National Enquirer or something. So it's kind of a random collection. Um, I was most interested in the classic books. Okay, so um, again, um, let's see. My computer is slowing down here. I hope that doesn't become an issue. Got too many things open. I'm going to close up a few more things here. And uh, I'm close that down. Technology. Okay, let's see if I can. Here we go. Go Google Doc. I'm going to go back to my website, JMB5, Google, okay, about HTM. Let's go. We've done books. We're going to keep going our way down. Now, Google Maps is something probably more of you have seen, perhaps. Um, again, since I already have an account, it's going to come up with the default here, and um, which is the Lovell area. I actually live in Cowley, which is over here someplace. Um, but uh, so, uh, so Google Maps is um, uh, an amazing feature. I, I love to play on this. Um, as uh, I've already implied, I'm a runner. And um, so I like to click on the satellite um, version. And I can plan my routes that I run. I like to get out. These are the mountains above Lovell. Um, we call the, the, like the sand hills. You start heading um, out uh, the Bighorn Mountains, or are to the um, north and to the east of us. And so I like to come up. I can zoom in, start to find some old road out here, a dirt road, and um, and my wife will come and drop me off.
stop in the middle of nowhere and I'll find my way home. And so I love this, this feature. Um, a couple of little tricks you can do with Google Maps. First of all, um, let's look at a different place. I grew up in Fort Bragg, California, so I'm going to go there and we'll see. So you can see my hometown here of Fort Bragg. I grew up right on the ocean. Here's the Pacific Ocean. So any place in the United States for certain, and most of Europe and lots of other places, there are Google Maps. Um, if you zoom in, you can see in more detail uh, the, the city and so forth. And you've probably um, perhaps seen funny things online where people have put words on the roof of their house. And, um, and so when Google comes and uses these satellite images, they can zoom in and see things on the top of their house and so forth. Let me show you a couple other tricks in Google Maps. We'll just go ahead and use um, um, my city here, this uh, my hometown. I'm just going to type in pizza and then 95437, which is um, the city of Fort Bragg. And, and what it will do is it will come up with all of the pizza places in Fort Bragg. And you can see it actually puts little A, B, C, D, E. It matches up on the left side with the pizza places here. Um, De Aurelio's is great, some authentic Italian pizza. If you're ever in Fort Bragg, that's the place to go. Um, let's do the same thing for, uh, let's see, Casper 82601, and um, see the pizza places in Casper, Wyoming. Give it a minute to load in. Um, okay, so here's Casper. You can see, again, all the pizza places. Um, we could type in something like um, car repair. I can spell. I'm still a little nervous. I don't like to type when lots of people are watching me. So we'll go ca car repair. And again, here we are in Casper. You can see all the different car repair places that are in the Casper area. And um, so again, anywhere in, in Google Maps, or we can just go back to the web and um, just to the regular Google, and you can just type in um, uh, McDonald's, McDonald's, um, and then any zip code, uh, 82420, and it will pull up the map and show you the local McDonald's. And so in my area, in northern Wyoming, the nearest one's in Powell, and then in Cody. Okay? So some tricks with Google. Again, you don't have to. I have the satellite here. This will pop up here. I have the satellite showing up, and maybe I don't want the satellite, so I just want the map, and um, which is a little bit easier for um, for you to see. Again, you can zoom in. You can zoom in to the point where um, here's the city of Cowley. Um, you can start to see all the streets. In Cali, and, and I'm guessing many of you have already seen some of these features before. So let's not spend too much time in there. My house is right about there. Okay, so let's go back to um, again my website and um, JMB5 Google.htm, and let's continue going down here. We've done maps. Now we're going to go to Google Finance for you stock people. Um, this is um, really just an amazing um, set of features that are here. Um, so let's say I'm interested in buying some stocks. I can just type in uh, PEP for Pepsi. I'll do a search here. And so here is everything you ever wanted to know about Pepsi. Now, I'm not a big stock person myself. I'm too poor. Um, but so what it shows here is about the last three days of how Pepsi stock has gone up and down. Okay? Um, if I want to compare that to the Dow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I click on there, and you can see that by comparison, by a percentage up or a percentage down, that Pepsi has somewhat followed the Google, sorry, uh, Pepsi and Dow have sort of followed each other. We can add another one, G-O-O-G, -O -O which is Google, and um, you can see that Google, for whatever reason, probably because I'm speaking today, has dropped um, Somewhat. Now, again, we're only looking at the last few days. We can change.
change it and we can do a, we can look at those three stocks over the last year and there you start to see that Google by comparison by a percentage is up about 60% in the last year whereas the Dow was up about 38% and the Pepsi is up about 25% okay and again you can search over a five year period or a 10 year period or so forth um, you can um, there's uh, sort of interesting down at the bottom it gives us other companies that may be related to what we're talking about. For example, it's got Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola and the National Beverage Corp. I'm not sure what all these are. It's got Current News. It's got some of the officers and directors for the Pepsi company, company websites. So um, all kinds of great things about Pepsi. Um, you can see some um, graphs of how much, I believe this is probably for today's results, um, how much they've gone up just in today's stock market yield and lots of things that I don't even understand. So that is um, Google Finance. You can also access Google Finance directly just by going to the regular Google website, which is right here, and you can just type in PEP and it'll automatically take you to, if you just type in the, um, every stock has a kind of a, a code or a symbol, and um, my computer's trying to run slowly again, hopefully we can, um, oh, I'm sorry, I missed something, you have to go stock, P-E-P, and then it comes up, and then you can click on Google Finance, so stock, P-E-P, -E not just P-E-P, -E and so you can see here's just today's um, Pepsi, the high, the low for today, okay? So let's go back again to my website and uh, google.htm on JMB5. Uh, let's go to Google News. Let me give you a little background on Google News if you're not familiar with it. <coughs> Google News is something obviously put together by Google. Um, I, I can't remember. It is something like five or 6,000 news websites that they look into. And they are continually searching these websites. It's a computer that does it, but it's searching all of these different news sites, ones that you know, like New York Times and CNN, Washington Post, Associated Press. You can see here's Miami Herald, Vanity Fair, uh, Wikipedia Healthcare. You know, there's just lots of different ones. And it creates this website of what they think are the main uh, news stories of the day. Um, Obviously, they're very correct. Obviously, oh, President Obama signing the health care biz, uh, bill is, is very popular and, and a very um, important news item for, the, for today. And so um, now you can see again that I have my, my login appears. And so if you have a Gmail account, which I encourage you to do, you can create your page to appear as you want it to appear. Let me show you kind of what I mean. You can go to edit this page, and you can see that the top stories are always going to be on top. But I have alternative energy as my, I'm way into alternative energy, and so that's what comes up on the top. And I have sports also. If I chose to have health come up to the top, all I have to do is drag it up there, and you can see now that health is the top story that's going to come up. So I'm going to go save layout. And you can see that now health is what comes up. I can search for local news here. And um, so I could type in my zip code or, or we could type in Laramie, Laramie, Wyoming. And we could add that. And so now it will come up with some local Laramie, Wyoming news to fit in with all the rest of the stories that come up. I can also add a section. I click on Add a Section on the right-hand side there, and there's lots of other options that you may like as your some of your top stories or some of the stories that you are most interested in. If you're interested in Google or physics or space, there's lots of these, and you can browse through them. Here's the alternative energy, astronomy, anything you can think about almost. So I want to add uh, archaeology to mine. Okay, so here's my archaeology. Now I go back to my Google News website, the main page here, and there it comes. Now when I go to 
edit this page, now you can see that, oh, it didn't come up. I, I made a mistake. But anyway, if, you, if I had to hit save, then the archaeology would now come up as one of my choices for um, my, my sites that, that show up on this Google News. Okay? Now, a couple other things with Google News really quickly. If you have a name like Bernheisel, it's really great because I can search for Google, I can search for my name, and I can see, um, so here I am the track coach, so here's the Lovell Chronicle shows up with a, um, an article that has my name in it as the, uh, as the track coach, um, and so forth. Um, you could, if you're interested in something like uh, global warming, you just search for global warming, and it'll show you any article in the last 30 days um, that comes out with that has global warming. It is the the default is if it's in the title, it's going to come up on top. If it's only in the story, it's going to come up further down. Now you can see on the left side, I can see. I want to see if there's any articles on global warming in the last hour. I'm not sure why that would make any difference, but here you can see some. Or I can go to the past week, past month. Now I can even go as far back as 1889. Um, and so here, now some of these, um, uh, this is a, it only goes as far back as 1990, probably wasn't very, oh, 1989. Anyway, so, um, and, uh, and so you know, some of these you can click on. Now some of them I have to warn you, you get to a website where it says, well, the only way we'll let you read that article is if you pay a little bit. So as you spend more time in here, you'll kind of get a feel for that. A couple other things that you can do. If I go to Advanced News Search, which is right here to the right of our search, I go to Advanced News Search. And let's say I only want to search for the words global warming, but I only want to search for them in a specific news site, like CNN. Okay? So now I click on that, and I go Search, and apparently global warming, that was in the past hour. Let's go to the past month. So here are CNN articles in the past month that have the words global warming in them, okay? And so you can see there's, there's five, okay? Um, I could put the source of the New York Times, okay? And um, you can see there are um, a, a couple of pages on it. Now, a couple of reasons why this might be interesting. Uh, for students, it would be interesting for them to compare newspapers. You hear all about as you listen to the news, that, that Fox News leans one way and MSNBC News leads the other way. And you could search for some of these terms, like global warming or like health care bill or President Obama, in the different websites to see how often the, the two websites may have articles about certain things. And it's, it's actually um, fairly interesting. And, um, and so there's some things that you can do there. You also can change your preferences, and I know that my time is running short. You can prefer pages written in, so I want to prefer pages written in in Russian. Now let's go one that we can probably read. Let's go Spanish. Let's go save preferences. Yes. And so now I'm going to search again. Let's see if it's going to work. I'm going to search for the name. Uh, let's go Obama and search. And I did something wrong, and that's the joy of doing live things. Preferences, Spanish, save preferences, okay. Uh, wait, I know what I did wrong. Uh, quickly here. Um, we want uh, preferences. I want to choose Spanish here. Well, there's Spanish. Now we'll go click on Spanish. Save preferences, okay. And now it is still not working. I'm going to refresh this page and then I'll give up. And I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I'm man enough to move on. So let's go on. And um, anyway, Google News Search is, is a great feature. Um, as a librarian, also, um, I know that the magazines I have in my back room are all um, at least a week old and more likely several years old, and this is the best site I've seen for getting truly current news on, um, on events and, um, and activities that are happening around the world. So let's
let's go back to uh, JMB5 and the Google site, and um, we're kind of running out of time here. I'm going to go get something called Google Health, and um, Google Health is um, uh, it's it's basically just this amazing resource on about every condition or disease you've ever thought of. Um, you can just go to the letter. Um, I'm going to go to cystic fibrosis. Um, I have a daughter with cystic fibrosis, and here is all this information that is handy about cystic fibrosis, about CF. Um, there are conditions listed and symptoms and drugs, and there's current articles. There's um, scholars, scholarly um, things. Like these are like from some real serious journals. There's some just regular news stories. There's illustrations. It's just this great collection of um, information about whatever condition you could possibly um, be interested in. And you can see as I scroll down, there's literally thousands of um, conditions. And it's just a, a, a very concise bit of information. But again, for students or for yourself who are interested in doing a paper or um, who actually have these um, conditions, it's a, just a great feature. Okay. The last couple I'm going to do, I'm going to spend just a little bit more time on. And, um, and both of these require a Google uh, or a Gmail login. The first one I want to go to is something called Google Docs. Now, as you probably know, Google and um, uh, Microsoft are at odds with each other. They're sort of uh, vying for um, domination of technology and the Internet and so forth. And so Google has created a free version, an online web version, of basically everything that Microsoft has in their Office program. And I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples here. And, um, and so one of your assignments would be that you have to create a very small spreadsheet. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And um, so let's go to Create New. And you can see here's all of the, um, I don't know how, there might be personal, so I probably should move on. But So we're going to go to Create New Document. And I'll show you these different um, options here. So I'm going to create a new document. And um, so I'm just going to start typing. And I put my name. And I say, you know, Dear Mom. And I start to type a letter. So how are you? Okay. So I'm starting a letter. Now let me show you a few features of this. Again, this is online. It is free. You just have to create a Google account. Um, I guess I need to put a question mark there. Now it has, um, it has fonts. So if I want to highlight this, I can choose some different font sizes. It doesn't have all the features that Microsoft Office does. I can choose the font, uh, font size. Um, I can choose the color I want. Um, a orange, uh, let's see, there we go. I've got an orange color. Um, I want to center something. I want to spell check. Let's misspell a word on purpose and we'll click check spelling. And you can see it doesn't recognize my name. It doesn't recognize R. So I click on that and it gives me some choices. And it didn't give me the word I was looking for. So I'm going to check it again check spelling again, and then it does accept the R. Um, you can change the different fonts and so forth, okay? So this is now, the reason why this is so wonderful is we use this, the students in our school almost exclusively use this program, and this is why. First of all, we have a couple of laptop labs that float around the school. We have other computer labs. Kids do work at home. Kids do work on whatever computer they're on at their aunt's house. If you use Google Docs, it remembers and stores everything for you for forever. Okay? So I could start this letter here at school, and I don't finish it. So I'll just go ahead. I could just log out. I hit sign out. And then I go to my, um, my house at home. I'll log back in, go to Google Docs, and it'll say, okay, here's a letter you started to your mom. I'll finish it. Or I could use it at another computer. I'm on a trip and I'm using a computer in a, in a hotel, whatever it is, and it saved it for me. So we had so much trouble with students who were using memory sticks and they had to, I, I started typing on laptop 17 and I can't find laptop 17, Mr. Bernhardt. You know, but now they just use Google Docs that stores it forever. 
if you want to print, you just go to print. Now, the question you're going to ask is, well, it doesn't have all the features that maybe um, uh, Microsoft Office does. So if I wanted to type most of it, and then I want to clean it up on Microsoft Office, I want to make it a little better. I can go File, Download As, uh, Word, so a Microsoft Word text, and, and it's going to download that file. Let's see if I can do this. And it should come up. It's, the computer's running slowly because of the sharing that we're doing, but we'll give that a minute to, to work. Um, and pretty soon a Google, uh, sorry, a Microsoft Word is going to pop up. Let me show you some of the other things that are here. Uh, I'm going to go back to Google Docs. I'm going to go create a presentation. And this is the free version of PowerPoint. And so here we go. It comes up and it's loading a little slowly. It's just like PowerPoint. Again, it doesn't have all the same features. Um, but I want to do a thing on um, on reptiles, and I can insert an image. Um, so let's insert a an image, and I don't have any reptile pictures on this computer, so I'll pull this one of my Bunsen burner I had. Okay, and let's see what else. So here's my Bunsen burner picture. So I start to make this um, PowerPoint on here, uh, and uh, reptiles are. And so then I want to go a new slide, so I hit plus, and I want to choose the layout, and so I start working on the second slide, okay? And now I'll tell you the neatest thing that I ever did with this, and I'll even show it to you. Well, I won't because it, it'll, it'll take a minute to pop up. But um, just for fun, uh, a couple years ago when I first realized about this Google Docs and this PowerPoint version that's within Google Docs, um, I had uh, my students create a, uh, a PowerPoint together on nuclear energy. It was just the first one I ever did. So what I went in, as I went in and created, I had like 18 kids in my chemistry class. I created 18 slides, and all I did on the top of each slide is put the, the, the subtopic of nuclear energy, like protons or like the dangers of or like you know, atomic bombs or, or whatever it was. I just put the, te the title on, and they had to create the rest of the slides. They had to get a couple of cool facts about that, a picture or two. And so I said, okay, you guys go on your own. And I had shared with them this. If, if you click on share, it allows you to invite other people to work on this project with you. So it's a great collaboration tool. So I invited all of the students in my chemistry class. They all have a Gmail account because we do a lot with this. I invited them, and they all were assigned one slide, we showed the PowerPoint in class at the end of the period, and we talked about it. And it was just a great, great feature. Um, but I would encourage you to um, go in and play with this just quickly here. Um, I'm going to get out of our PowerPoint here. I'm going to go back to Google Docs. You can see there's little reptiles that I started. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. This is... <laughs> okay, well... This is apparently blocked by our school district right now. They have shut down our, they've really tightened up our filter because we're pause testing right now. So they've taken a few things out. So I can't show you the spreadsheets right now. Um, but if you go to there, and that's your assignment, if you have trouble, send me an email. But you go to create a new spreadsheet. You go in, put in a little bit of information, put in some numbers like the uh, um, heights of, of uh, the first 10 kids to walk into your classroom or something, and, um, and, and it'll, it'll help you create a graph. If you have trouble, send me a, a note or I'll give you a, a, a different assignment. Um, in live activities, things don't work, and, um, and this is one of those moments, I guess. So um, another feature, another thing of Google Docs is you can create a form, and I'm betting that it's blocked too right now. Yep. Um, in, in forms, you can actually create multiple choice tests. You can create, um, it's um, somewhat like Microsoft Access, where people can enter in information and so forth. So um, let's move on here. Um, we're, I know we're just about out of time, and I don't want to keep you from your lunch. So I want to show you a couple of other things really quickly here. We're going to go to Google Calendars. And 
And, um, and so here is Google Calendars. And um, again, uh, starting next year, our school district is going to use Google Calendars for our main um, uh, uh, calendar program. It's all online. Parents can look at it. They do not have to have a Gmail account to look at it. You can, you can um, the person who is in charge can choose whether or not to allow people to access, to add information. So for example, um, here is the Rocky Mountain High School track schedule. I'm a track coach. So here was our first day of practice. Here's our high school track meet in Grable. Here was, we have a meet in Cody um, this Saturday. Um, and so, Jamie, are you still there? Yeah, go ahead. Keep going, John. Okay. All right. So, um, so here are some things that I've added. You can see that I've got some holidays on here, and you can see I've got some, some of the, the uh, phases of the moon or just some of the things that I've added. I've also got my personal calendar, which I'm not going to turn on. If I clicked on that, it would pop up on the screen. Um, I, if, if I was to print this calendar, and for some reason I don't want the track schedule because I'm giving it to somebody who doesn't care about the track schedule, I can just click that off and the track schedule won't appear. You can see that I'm an Oakland A's fan, and so I can click on the Oakland Athletics, and it's got a calendar. They don't, their first game is until April. And you can see here's all the Oakland A's baseball schedules um, for that. I can turn off the Oakland A's schedule, and then you just see the other things. Um, to create um, a, a day is very easy. Um, I'll just pretend, I'll just double click right here, I'll say that Monday is um, Betty's birthday, and I'll say create event, and it pops up that it's Betty's birthday. It's really easy to do. You can take, and I can highlight three of them, and say on vacation, and it makes a line across that says it's the whole month. Now, so um, a couple other things really quickly. If I want to add, and there are lots of different things. You can add by URL. In other words, if somebody else has created a, a site, you can just add them. You can add friends calendars. But here's the kind of the interesting browse interesting calendars. And so here you can find holidays. If I want to add the Brazilian holidays, there's sports. So I want to add sports. I want basketball. Um, here's the Philippine Basketball Cup, but I want the, uh, let's say, the National Basketball Association. Here's all the teams in the NBA. Let's say I want to add the New York Knicks, and I can just choose those, hit subscribe. I don't know why they use the word subscribe. It implies you have to pay some money, but you do not. Um, so now you can see the New York Knicks is now going to appear on my thing. So I want to go back to my calendar, and now the Knicks games are now showing up on my an amazing feature. Google Calendars is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, um, I'm going to wind down here. I'm just going to go back to Google.com, and I'm going to. Uh, oh, I'm in Google in Espanol because um, I set the preferences of that. But we'll just deal with that. I just want to check a few more things in my notes, make sure I've covered everything. Um, uh, I realize that I've gone through. A lot of information. Let's um, let's do one more. Let's see if I can change this back to um, English real quick here. Um, yeah. uh, now my computer decides to get really slow. So um, let's go to English. Good thing I uh, well let's. Inglace with an I. Okay, so let's go back. Um, I'll bet I've really messed it up now. Let's just try. And... Okay, well, let's see what happens. If I can... A couple other things real quick. You can go to phone book and colon, and I want to find the Smiths in Cody, Wyoming. I can do a search, and... Um, <coughs> Smith, Cody, comma, Cody, Wyoming. Uh, it's not working because I'm in Spanish. So I am going to just uh, give a few concluding statements here, and um, and.
and then I will uh, post to Jamie um, some of the some of my notes and some of the things. But just in review, um, uh, to take you back to this website, um, jmb5.com, google.htm, gives you um, a, uh, a link to all those main sites that I have. Um, I would encourage you to get on there and spend some time. Um, tell me what's cool. Um, send me an email with a couple of paragraphs of something you did or found that was interesting. Um, I would like it if you would go to Google Docs and create a spreadsheet. Um, I don't think you'll find it hard. If you do, that's okay. Just send me a note and I will, uh, I'll send you a little quick thing. Um, I didn't realize it was going to be blocked today, obviously. Um, I want to just conclude by just telling you sort of a, a downside about Google that some people are concerned about, and, um, but um, that I think is unfounded. Um, Google stores information, and there's an advantage and a disadvantage of this. The advantage is the more you use Google, the more it recognizes you and the more it knows you. Okay? Since I use Google in a lot, and when I'm logged in as my, with my Google account, the, the more I use it, the more it notices the kind of websites that I want to go to and the kind of things that I search for. Now, it's an advantage when you're doing searches because it helps you find things more quickly because it has a sense of what you want. The downside is, is that the ads on the side, that's how Google pays its bills, is the ads that it puts on its side, are more specifically targeted to you. And, and so, you know, so that, you know, it's hoping you click on those ads and that it helps it make its money. Another downside that some people stress about a little bit is that let's say that I was a bad person and um, was trying to learn how to make drugs online. I, I was searching for things like how to make meth in Google, then it, it, has, it has a memory of that. It knows every search that I've made. Now, as of right now, that is not admissible in court. Now, it's changing, and there's been some challenges to that, and, and I'm guessing at some point that might be the case. So I guess I just have to give you that little fair warning that you need to be cautious of, of um, just stay on the up and up. And if you're searching for bad things, then don't be logged into your Google account um, or use some other computer. But um, uh, I, I'm, I'm done. I appreciate you. Uh, send me an email. Um, let me know um, maybe what I could uh, 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 improve upon, and um, hopefully I've taught you some things that you'll appreciate and you can use again. So um, thank you, Jamie, and thank you for the Wyoming State Library, and 